Grover from Upscale Audio here, and today we're going to be talking about the Chord Hugo TT2. Now, the TT2 has been out for a little while, so some of you may be passingly familiar with Chord and some of their other products, as well as this product, but there's a few interesting things that I bet you didn't know about this stack. Now, let's start with Chord. Chord is well known for making some really fantastic digital products at this point. Rob Watts is the mind behind their digital products. So we start at the low end with something like the Mojo, which is now in its second iteration, as well as the portable version of the Hugo. There's also the Cutest, a small DAC, which is quite affordably priced and sounds really, really fantastic. And then at the top end, they have the Dave, which is their flagship DAC. The Hugo TT2 sits right underneath the Dave and right above the Cutest. So now that we've located it in the line, let's talk a little bit about what makes it special. Well, there's a lot of functionality here that's on offer that's not on offer on the lower end DACs. So there's a headphone amplifier which puts out six watts or more in class A. It's a very, very powerful headphone amplifier. There's also selectable crossfeed options for headphones. So the Hugo TT2 has long been known in the headphone realm as really a fantastic option for headphones. The Dan Clark headphones, like the Expanse and the Ether 2 have paired really well with this for me in the past. I actually really enjoy that sound. Um, and it will even power some of the harder to drive Hi-Fi Man headphones really well. Um, something that's kind of interesting about Rob Watt's conception of digital is that he uses a really high number of filter taps. So he's got a custom programmed Xilinx uh, FPGA chip in all of the core DACs. This one particularly uses, um, I believe, an Arctic 7. Now, what's interesting about that, other than the fact that it is a custom programmed FPGA, is that it allows for the use of a different kind of filter that runs at a much higher sampling rate, 768 kilohertz in this case, and it also allows for the use of many, many filter taps. So whereas a typical DAC might use a few thousand filter taps or perhaps 10,000 filter taps, the Hugo TT2 uses 98,304 filter taps, and you can stack it on top of the accompanying M scaler, which uses over a million filter taps. And that actually does, to me, offer quite a bit of sound improvement. It does add some latency for those who are using this for you know, gaming applications or things like that. Personally, I think this is a little bit of a higher end device than that. But it's a very interesting topology. You should read more about it on the Chord website, which you can find linked from upscaleaudio.com's page on the Hugo TT2. Now, the interesting thing about what all those filter taps and that really long linear phase filter and all that cool FPGA programming adds up to is that you have functionality and also great sound quality. There's a certain richness and depth to imaging from Chord DACs that you know, it's very hard to find on other DACs. They have a certain smoothness and they have a certain finesse to them that I actually really appreciate on both headphones and speakers. Now, this is something that will change, as I said, a little bit with the M scaler. The M scaler takes that to a certain higher level of refinement. But I have to say, for the price point and underneath the Dave, you'd be hard pressed to find many DACs that compete really, really well with the Hugo TT2. Although it's a bit smaller, perhaps, than a full size rack component, it truly is a top flight headphone or two channel DAC. This is amongst the best DACs that you can buy under $10,000. Another thing that's interesting about this DAC is that it offers you some flexible options. There are a couple different options with regards to the filters in this. So you can change the filters, and it will change to my ears a little bit of how the high end responds to transients. So if you like a softer sound, you like a little bit of a brighter, sharper, more dynamic sound, the filters will allow you to change that. Let's talk a little bit about inputs and outputs. Obviously, we've got those headphone outputs on the front. So that's going to offer USB, that's going to offer BNC to connect it to the M scaler, and it's going to offer also some XLR and some RCA outputs. So lots of connectivity and lots of functionality here. When it comes to using the unit, I find the industrial design is kind of fanciful. This little dial here on the bottom is the volume knob and also clicks in for some of the controls. And it's kind of a fun touch. Most of the cord decks have the little sort of jelly bean on the front. I think it adds to sort of the visual appeal of the unit, though you can also get these in black, which is quite a sleek color as well. Um, and on a desktop, it really does look quite nice. It's kind of got a classy, you know, people ask, what is that unit? It's kind of cool. So, in terms of a two-channel unit, while, as I said, it does look a little smaller, perhaps, than your typical full rack mount component, if you add the M-Scaler stacked on the bottom, this really is a very easy unit to place into your system. And there's just an incredible degree of sound quality on tap. You can use it as a pre-amplifier as well. It works great in that capacity. Um, and in a pinch, I know some people have connected it to speakers. I don't recommend doing that. However, the headphone and preamp, out preamp outputs really are quite powerful in this. Hugo TT2.
The DAC is incredibly high tech. Rob Watts has been doing fantastic digital for a long time. And if you're interested in learning more about the specific technical details of exactly how the DAC Sage works, you should check out some of the CORD website links. They've got some fantastic interviews with Rob. And he talks at length about the topology of the DAC, his thoughts behind it, what kind of music he likes to listen to. And it's really, really well done. And there's some fantastic information out there. I definitely encourage you to go check those out. If you want to know more about the hard functionality of the unit, or you want to get a little bit more info from us about it, check out upscaleaudio.com's page on the Hugo TT2, and I will see you next time.